All right, hi, this is John Linneval from John Linneval Tutoring, and this is Barron's Chapter 6N, Coordinate Geometry. Here's my contact information, but don't worry, you'll be able to see this at the end if you don't catch it right now. For best results, use the Barron's SAT 30th or 29th or even the 28th edition. This video covers pages 631 through 633 in the 30th edition of Barron's SAT, which is called Barron's SAT Premium SAT Study Guide. So the page numbers are exactly the same in the 29th edition, and the problems are identical or close enough in the 28th edition. So the pages might be different in the 28th edition, but anyway, 29th, 28th, it's basically the same problems. You shouldn't use an edition older than Barron's new SAT from 2016, which is the 28th edition, in any event. Not everything in these books is going to be covered in these videos where I go over the questions read the book. There are things in the chapters that aren't actually in the review questions at the end. The older editions of this book, the 28th or the 29th edition, can be had cheaply if not free from used booksellers. Think half.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Marketplace, or maybe if you have kids who live near you who've already taken the test, or public libraries often sell old editions. Literally, I've bought, you know, just just recently expired SAT books for a dime from public libraries. Either way, I suggest you start early because even if you're going to go buy a new edition or use the current library copy, you're going to be in real trouble if somebody else has already checked out the library book or if you go to your local bookstore and it's sold out. You know, let's say it's two days before the SAT, you decide to start studying. Already a bad idea. And then you compound the problem by, oh, you can't get a hold of the book even if you pay full price. That's not good. So start early. Question one, page 631. If A, which is the point at negative 1, 1, and B, the point at 3, negative 1, are the endpoints of one side of square ABCD, what is the area of the square? Well, we could try drawing this, but we could see the sides at an angle, not along a vertical or horizontal line. So here we have... We draw a rough sketch, A is at negative 1, 1, so it's over here, and B is at 3, negative 1. So we can see that's a downward slope line, it's not really at a nice uh, angle for just figuring it out. If it were along, let's say, you know, Y equals 1 or something like that, so it would be a nice flat bottom of a square, or if it were along, X equals negative 1, so it's the side of a square, then you could sketch it out and probably figure it out pretty easily. Can't do it here though. So the easiest way to do this problem is to use the coordinate distance formula, which is d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I know it's a big, ugly, scary looking formula, but trust me, it's not that hard to use. Okay, where d is the distance between the two points, so this is d, and x1, y1, and x2, y2 are the two points. So this is gonna be x1, y1, this is x2, y2. So here x2 is three, and then y2 is negative 1, x1 is negative 1, and y1 is 1. So x2 minus x1 squared is just going to be 3 minus negative 1. We know that's the same as 3 plus 1, so that's just going to be 4 squared, so that's 16. y2 is going to be negative 1. y1 is 1, so it's going to be negative 1 minus 1, so that's negative 2. We know that when you square negative 2, you get 4, so 16 plus 4 is 20. The side length is the square root of 20. Obviously, we know that the area of a square is just going to be the side length squared, so it's just the square root of 20 squared, which is simply 20. It's like asking who's buried in Grant's tomb, right? Actually, that little piece of trivia, Grant and Grant's wife are both buried there. But anyway, here the answer is 20. All right, question 2, page 631. If P, which is 2 comma 1, so the x value is 2, y value is 1, and Q, 8 comma 1, are two of the vertices of a rectangle, which of the following cannot be another of the vertices? In case you don't know, vertices just means corners. So, okay, so we see, all right, 2, 1 is here, 8, 1 is here. Okay, so it's got to make some kind of rectangle that either goes like this or like this. Well, okay, A is 2, 8, so we go to 2, 8. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that works fine. That's this nice green line here. And then B is 8, 2. Well, okay, I drew it a little bit off the line, but you can see, oh, oops. I have it going up to 8, 3. Well, fine. 8, 2 would be right here. Oh, well, so sue me. Obviously, it'll make a nice square. C, 2 minus 8. Okay, if this is 2, 
minus 8. I didn't draw this one in, but fine. We see it goes right down here to here. That's going to be pretty much the same as this one, except going in the opposite direction. And also, it's a little bit farther. It's going to be 9 instead of 8, right? Because it has to go 1 and then 8, so that's 9. But either way, that one works. So negative 2, 8. Well, okay, negative 2, 8. Oh, that puts you here at point D. Yeah, there's no way you're going to have this, and that's going to make a rectangle. You could make some sort of parallelogram, something like that. But anyway, the only one that won't work is D, negative 2, 8. So this is a good one to sketch. Let's move on. Question 3, page 631. A circle whose center is at 6, 8 passes through the origin. Which of the following points is not on the circle? Okay, so we see A is 12, 0, B is 6, negative 2, C is 16, 8, D is, 2, neg is negative 2, 12. So we can solve this by figuring out the radius of the circle and sketching. Since the circle goes through the origin 0, 0, we can use the coordinate distance formula to find the length of the line segment from the origin to the center, which is, of course, a radius. So we can do that very quickly. 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to 36 plus 64 equals 100. And then we have to take the square root. Remember from up here where we did the coordinate distance formula, d is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Well, that's all we're doing here. So fine. We know that 36 plus 64 is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. So we can also see that the lines from the origin to 6, 0, and 0, 8 are two legs of a right triangle with legs with lengths 6 and 8. So you can say, hey, wait a minute, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, because it's a 3x, 4x, 5x triangle where x equals 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10. So that's another fancy pants way you can do it if you recognize, hey, it's a 6, 8, 10 triangle. If you don't, no big deal. This was not very hard to just use the Pythagorean theorem, was it? So either way, the hypotenuse of that triangle is 10. So the easiest way to figure out what's not on the circle is just to draw a rough sketch. Because now that we know that the radius is 10, we can just do this. I was able to use this nifty Desmos program online to just put in the figures here. So I said, OK, the center is at 6, 8. So h is 6, k is 8. <coughs> Excuse me and the radius is 10, so boom, it drew the circle for me. So then all I had to do was add these nifty lines, and we can just do this. This is pretty easy. So A, 12, 0. Well, 6 plus 6 is 12. The middle yellow line is the same 8 units used to calculate the radius with the center and the origin. So here we go. This is going from 8 to negative 2. So that's actually... Da, 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 da. Okay, so the hypotenuse. All right, so this is, here we go. This is 8. This is going to be another 6. So this is 6, 8. So then we know that the hypotenuse here, the green line, is equal to 10. So we know that this is on the circle 12, 0. So that works perfectly fine. Next one, 6, negative 2. Well, 6, 8 is exactly, uh, da, da, da. it's going to be exactly 10 units away from 6, negative 2, because we know 8 minus negative 2 is 8 plus 2, which is 10. So yeah, that's 10 units away. So again, it's within a perfect 10 unit radius. So that is on the circle. So we've got 1, 2, 3, and then... C, 16, 8. Okay, well, 16 would be over here. And then this is 8. So, yeah, how about that? I didn't draw in the line, but you can see, well, 10, and this is, you know, this is 6. You add 10, so that's definitely going to be 16. And it works when you're at 8 because then you don't have to use any of the length of the line to go up or down. So, it's just 10 units over, so that goes right to 16.8, even though I didn't draw it in. All right, so finally, what we get is 6. Okay, this next one is, what is it again? Okay, to negative 2, 12, to da, da, da. All right, da, da, da. negative 2, 12. 
and that says 612, but it should be 68. Wait, oh, I see. Negative 212 to 612. Okay, so here's negative 2, and then that's 12 to 612 would be da, 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 negative 2, 12 to 612. Okay, yeah, that's going to be 8 units. And then the next thing that we have is from 612 to 68 is 4 units because all right, it would be 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 4 units. Okay, so that's going to be da, 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 8 units, 4 units. So that's 64 plus 16. That's going to be the square root of 80 as we see here. So it's you know 8 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 64 plus 16 which is the square root of 80, which is not 10. It's a bit less than 9. And when we take a look at our magic graph here again, we can see that it only reaches to just about here. It does not actually touch the circle, so we know that that's not the right answer. I know you're thinking, well, gee, John, I'm not going to be able to have this magical graph drawn for me while I'm taking the test. Well, you might if you have a graphing calculator and it's on the calculator section, but you don't have to because you can just figure these out. And once you figure out these three all are on the line, you can just say D has to be wrong by process of elimination. Or even you just figure out the length of this line segment and you realize, okay, that's not 10 units, so it cannot possibly be right because it's the wrong distance from the center. All right, so here we go. Question four. Question 4, page 631. What is the slope of a line that passes through AB and 1 over AB? So let's say B is 4. Okay, so we see that's just going to be a straight line that is horizontal at Y equals 4. Well, we see that the slope is the rise over the run, so from 4 to 4 or B to B, that just becomes 0. And it doesn't matter what A and 1 over A are because as long as A is not equal to 0, you're okay. It's just going to be, if, you know, basically if a is equal to zero, then you have zero minus one over zero. So that would be dividing by zero minus, you know, zero minus one over zero, which is undefined. So it'd be undefined and then even more undefined. But anyway, assuming a is not zero, then you just end up with zero over whatever non-zero value a minus one a is, and you still end up with zero. So you can also just remember that any line that connects two points with the same y value has to be the graph of y equals b, whatever, where b is the y-intercept. So this is b. As soon as you know that, that the rise is 0, you don't have to do anything else. You can just say, okay, I know that for a horizontal line, there is no slope. It's flat. That's why there's no slope. So when the slope is 0, y is equal to b, which is the y-intercept. And that's the answer. A is equal to 0. Question 5. If C is not equal to 0 and the slope of the line passing through negative CC and 3CA is 1, which of the following is an expression for A in terms of C? We know the slope is rise over run, so that's going to be Y2, which would be A minus C, so that's A minus C, and then the run is going to be 3C minus minus C, so that's going to be 3C minus minus C, so that's just 3C plus C. So we end up with A minus C over 4C equals 1. Why? Because they told us the slope is 1. So we multiply by 4C to get A minus C equals 4C. So then A is equal to 5C, which is answer choice D. And in case you're confused about rise over run, moving towards the right is run, moving up is rise. And moving towards the left would be a negative run, moving down is a negative rise. Okay. Question 6, page 631. What is the slope of the line that passes through 3, 2 and is parallel to the line containing 2, 3 and 2, negative 3? Well, we know parallel lines have the same slope, so both lines can be expressed as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Since the lines are parallel, the lines do not have the same b value. Luckily, we don't care. The slope is all we're asked to find, so the slope is just going to be negative 3 minus 3, so that's negative 6, that's the rise, and then 2 minus negative 2 is up 2 plus 2, so you end up with negative 6 
over 4, which is negative 3 over 2, which is answer A. So what is the slope of the line that passes through 3, 2 and is perpendicular to the line containing negative 2, 3, and 2, negative 3? So that's exactly the same values as the previous question, but we must know that a perpendicular line, well, oops, a little ungrammatical there, that perpendicular lines have slopes that are the negative reciprocals of each other. Just flip the slope and change the sign from positive to negative. So just flip it, and if it's negative, make it positive. If it's positive, make it negative. We know from the previous problem that the slope of the original line is negative 3 over 2. So the slope of the perpendicular line is the original line's slope's negative reciprocal, which means we flip the fraction and change the sign to get 2 over 3. All right, so question 8, page 631. What is the equation of the line that passes through 4, negative 4, and 4, 4? You could go figure out that the slope is equal to the rise over the run, which is 4 minus minus 4. Okay, so the rise is just 4 minus minus 4, which is the same as 4 plus 4, which is 8. And then the run is 4 minus 4, which is 0, for two different y values corresponding to the same x value. The equation is x equals b. In this case, b is equal to 4, as we can see on the orange line. But the slope is undefined since x minus x is 0, so the slope y2 minus y1 over 0 is undefined. Therefore, the equation is x equals 4, which is choice A. Um, it's faster and easier if you realize that two points with different y values, that is two distinct points on a line, have the same x value. So all the points on the line have the same x value and the slope is undefined. And the equation is x equals b. Notice that x equals b is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. In fact, it is a vertical line. So you can't have more than one y value for one x on a line, curve, etc., to be a function. So if they gave you something that made a little snake curvy shape like this, you could say, no, it crosses a whole bunch. You know, basically, the same x value gives you five or six different y values. So it's not a function. It may be something else, but it's not a function. All right, hope that helped. And question 8 continued. This also works where the y values are the same as we already saw before. And in fact, this is the same graphic I used for question 4. So you could try 4, negative 4, and 4, 4. You can find the slope is 4 minus 4 over 4 minus minus 4. So it becomes 0 over 8. So it's flat. There's no slope. And then the y-intercept, which is the b in the slope-intercept formula, y equals mx plus b. So here, 4 would be equal to 0 times x plus b. So 4 is just equal to b. Or just know that if two different points on the line all have the same y value, then all the points have the same y value and the slope is 0. The equation is y equals b, where b is the y-intercept. All right, let's go on. Question 9, page 632. Line L is tangent to a circle whose center is at 3, 2. Okay, so I, here's the center at 3, 2. If the point of tangency is 6, 6, which you can see, 6, 6. Again, desmos.com. Good deal, free circle drawer. All right, and this is perpendicular. I couldn't draw in a nice little box thing, so just trust me. This is as close to perpendicular as I could get it. Uh, anyway. So what is the slope of line L? This should be a script L. Oops, it's just a regular L. It's not an I, I promise. Anyway, first know that a tangent line is always perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency, which is what I was talking about. So whenever you draw a radius and you have a tangent line, a lot of times on the SAT they won't give you the little box or tell you that it's 90 degrees because they want you to know that little factoid. So know that the reason this looks like it's perpendicular is it is perpendicular. So all we need to do is find the slope of the line perpendicular to the line connecting 3, 2, and 6, 6, which is this here, which is a radius. So we know the slope is going to be 6 minus 2 is delta y. That's the, that's the rise. 6 minus 3 is 3, so that's 4 over 3. We know that the tangent over the perpendicular line has a slope that's the negative reciprocal of the radius, so that just means you flip this, so it becomes 3 over 4, then you put a negative sign in front of it, so it's positive, so, which is negative 3 over 4, which is choice B.
Again, I use this thing at desmos.com, it's also in the description below, to make a circle from the points, radius, etc., by filling in the information into the circle formula x minus h squared, plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where hk is the center of the circle and r is the radius. <coughs> Excuse me. Question 10, page 632. What is the equation of... Eh. That should be the line rather than the, but anyway, the equation of the line that crosses the y-axis at 0, 5 and crosses the x-axis at 5, 0. We can graph it and or we can solve it algebraically. Just by graphing, we can see the slope is negative. When it goes down as you go to the right, then you know that it's negative. And the y-intercept from phi is 5 from the given information. I mean, we can see it's 0, 5, so when x equals 0, it's on the y-axis, so it's 0, 5. So we see the line goes down 5. For every 5, it goes to the right. Since the slope is rise over run, it's going to be negative 5 over 5, which is negative 1. So the equation is negative x plus 5. Yes, you could write it as 5 minus x, but they don't in the answers, so don't bother. Alternately, you could just take 0 minus 5 over 5 minus 0 equals negative 5 over 5 is negative 1. And the y-intercept is 5 because y equals 5 when x equals 0. Again, you get negative x plus 5, which is choice D. Questions 11 and 12 refer to circle O, in which point A is negative 1, 0, and B is 3, negative 2, are and points of a diameter. So 11, what's the area of circle O? You can draw a graph if you like, but you don't really have to. I wouldn't bother on the SAT. The easiest way to do it is just find the midpoint of line segment AB, since the problem tells you AB is a diameter. That means the distance from the midpoint to A or B, which would be half the diameter, is a radius. And of course, the area of any circle is equal to pi r squared. A equals pi r squared. The midpoint is going to be the x value, basically the average of the two x values. So it's just going to be negative 1 plus 3 over 2. So that just becomes 2 over 2, which is 1. Y value is 0 minus 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So midpoint m is 1, negative 1. Use the coordinate distance formula to find the distance between a and m. So the distance is equal to the radius. And using the coordinate distance formula, it's the square root of 1 minus 1 squared plus 0 minus minus 1 squared. So that's just going to be negative 2 squared, which is 4 negative 1 squared, which is 1, so it's the square root of 5. Square root of 4 plus 1 is square root of 5. Since the radius is square root of 5, then pi r squared, which is said to be 5 times the square root of 5 squared, which again is one of those who's buried in Grant's tomb things. It's just going to be 5. So then 5 pi, that's answer b. Question 12, which of the following is the equation of circle O? So you should know the equation of a circle can be written as x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where hk is the center of the circle, and r is the radius. From the previous problem, we know the center is 1, negative 1, so it's going to be x minus 1, and then y is going to be minus minus 1, so that's going to be x minus 1, y pl plus y plus 1. So x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared. I'm losing it a little bit here. Anyway, x minus 1 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to square root of 5 squared, which is 5. So then we know the equation of the circle is x minus 1 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 5. The answer is D. Questions 13 and 14. So 13 and 15 concern the parabola whose equation is y equals negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 16. 13, where does the graph of the parabola cross the y-axis? The parabola crosses the y-axis where x is 0. So we just substitute 0 in for x in the equation. OK, 2 plus 0 squared, obviously that's just 2 times 0, which is 0. 12 times 0 is also 0. So then we just end up minus 16 equals minus 16. Answer A. What is the sum of the x-coordinates when the graph of the parabola crosses the x-axis? The graph crosses the x-axis where y equals 0. So again, we just solve the equation y equals 0 equals negative 2x plus 12x minus 16. Since it's equal to 0, it's really easy to factor out extraneous factors. So we can just factor out the negative 2. Obviously, 0 divided by negative 2 is still 0. So we end up with 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. Hey, that's pretty easy to factor. We can just factor it as x minus 2 times x minus 4. And you're thinking, well, hey, John. How do you know that? I'm glad you asked. I just foiled it to check. 
So x squared, yes. Then the outer is going to be minus 4x. The inner is minus 2x. The last is 8, so that's equal to x squared minus 6x plus 8. Hey, it works. So x is equal to 2 or 4, 2 plus 4 is 6, and that's answer C. That's another little SAT trick. They want you to add together the x and the y value or something like that. I guess it makes it a little bit easier to enter in a grid in and things like that, but mostly it's just one extra step to trip you up. Question 15, page 632. Which of the following is the sum of the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the vertex of the parabola? It's easy to find the vertex of a parabola using negative b over 2a to find the x-coordinate and then plug in the x-value to find the y-value. I know I have seen a way to directly compute the y-value um, with just the you know ax squared plus bx plus c formula, but I wasn't able to dig it up and I don't know it off the top of my head because most people just figure out the x value and then plug it in to get the y value, so that's all I'm going to be able to teach you today. Anyway, y equals negative 2x plus 12x minus 16, so negative b over 2a is going to be negative 12 over 2a, which is negative 4, so that's equal to 3. So the y value of the vertex is just going to be 2 times 3 squared, or negative 2 times 3 squared, so that's negative 2 times 9, which is negative 18. And then 12 times 3, of course, is 36 and minus 16, so okay, we can see 36 minus 16, that's 20, so negative 18 plus 20 is of course 2. So the vertex is 3, 2, and the sum is 5, which is answer B. So again, they want you to add these numbers together, eh. All right, question 16 is page 632, or it's on page 632, I should say. If the coordinates of triangle RST are R00, S70, and T25, what is the sum of the slopes of the three sides of the triangle? It helps to just draw a little triangle and label the points. You don't really have to draw coordinate axes, but you realize 00 and 70, oh, okay, those are both going to be on the x-axis. So we can see that the slope of RS has got to be 0 because it's flat. So that's 0. You can do 0 minus 0 over 7 minus 0, so that's just 0 over 7, which is 0. The slope of RT is going to be, okay, the Y values are 5 and 0, so that's 5 minus 0. The X values are 2 and 0, so that's 5 over 2. The slope of TS is going to be 2, 5, okay, so it's going to be 7 minus 5, or I'm sorry, eh. it's going to be... 0 minus 5, and then 7 minus 2, so that's 0 minus 5 over 7 minus 2, which is negative 5 over 5, which is negative 1. The sum is 0 plus 5 halves minus 1 equals 3 halves. Okay, pretty easy, right? Cool. Question 17, page 633. If the area of circles O is k pi, what is the value of k? All right, they do it that way because obviously they don't want you to have to multiply by 3.14 or 159, whatever. So they'll just factor out the pi. All right, so here's a trick. The circle goes through the origin. So they just show you that in the drawing, even though they don't tell you that in the problem. So it goes through the origin. So then we know that the radius is just 0, 0 to 3, 3. So that's 3 minus 0 squared plus 3 minus 0 squared. So obviously it's just going to be the square root of 9 plus 9, square root of 18. So that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which is 3 root 2. Since a is equal to pi r squared, we know the area is pi times the square root of 18. So actually, I didn't have to do this whole factoring it down to 3 root 2. So if I would have thought that before I typed this out, I could have just gone straight from here to here and go, oh, it's pi root 18 squared, which is equal to 18 pi, so k is equal to 18. But doing this isn't going to kill you. Anyway, that's the answer to that one. Question 18, so questions 18 and 19 concern the circle whose equation is x squared minus 8x plus y squared minus 4y plus 11 equals 0. If the area of the circle is expressed as k pi, what is the value of k? Well, the first thing we must do is complete the square for the x and y factors. We want to divide the coefficient of x, which is negative 8, and y, 4 by 2, and make those fa the factors of the perfect square. We get 
x minus 4 squared and y minus 2 squared. When we expand those perfect squares, we get x squared minus 8x plus 16 and y squared minus 4y plus 4. However, 16 plus 4 is equal to 20 and we only have 11 on the end here because remember this is x squared minus blah blah blah. You know, so it's all this plus 11 equals 0. Okay, so we need this to be 20, so we can add 9 and make this 20 if we add 9 to both sides. So we get x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 9. So remember the equation of a circle can be written as x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where hk is the center of the circle and r is the radius. So the radius is the square root of 9, which is 3, and the area of the circle is 9 pi. So k is equal to 9. Question 9, page 633, what is the sum of the coordinates of the center of the circle? The equation of the circle is x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 9. So we know the center hk, where x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, and r is the radius, so we just know the center is going to be 4 and 2. So it's 4, 2, and the sum of 4 plus 2 is just 6. 20, page 633. The easiest way to solve this problem is to split the figure into a rectangle and a triangle. We can make a, we can make, we can make a rectangle with vertices, that is corners, at negative 2, 1, okay, and then negative 2, 3, so it goes up straight like that, and then 5, negative 1, so it goes over from 2, negative 1, and then we can put in point E here, where E is going to be at 5, 3. So it's over from here, so it's on 3, and it's on 5. So it's really easy to see that from 2, negative 2 to 5 is 7, whether you use A, D, or B, E. And then we can see that from A to B is 4, because it's 3 minus negative 1. So this is just 7 times 4, as you can see I wrote it in the 4 and the 7 here. And that's 28. And then we can see that the base of the triangle BEC, which is CE, is just going from uh, 5, 6 to 5, 3. So obviously 6 minus 3 is 3. So five, you know, the 5's cancel out. 6 minus 3 is 3, so you get 0, 3. And we already know the height is 7 because that's this value here. So since we know the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, it's 1 half 21, which is 10.5. So the total area is 28 plus 10.5, is just equal to 38.5. And we're done. Did you find this video useful? Please like it and subscribe to this channel. Neither action costs you anything. You'll be alerted about my new videos. Why do I care? It's simple. YouTube doesn't let me share any ad revenue unless I have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of view time in a year. So if you saw an ad on my channel or during, before, whatever, after this video, know that I did not get any money from that ad revenue. So you can help me get some by subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. Thanks. I don't have anywhere near 1,000 subscribers, so it really helps me if you subscribe. If you have a copyright issue, you think I copied somebody else's copyrighted material, especially your copyrighted material, please contact me. I'll be glad to discuss it with you. For the same reasons, you are not only welcome, but encouraged to share links to this video, put it in playlists, etc. I'm always happy to read and respond to constructive criticism or suggestions for new videos. And by the way, I'm not saying copyright issues are the reasons that I want you to subscribe. It's because ad revenue is the reason I want you to subscribe. And also because it's a cool channel, don't you think? And I'm always happy to read and respond to constructive criticism or suggestions for new videos. I do reserve the right to delete comments from and block those who specialize in destructive criticism, you know, trolls, or things that are off topic, such as things written by spammers or disturbed people. If you want to contact me, my cell number is 415-623-4251. You can always text me. Please, no business proposals. Um, don't try to sell me anything. Anyway... Email is john at johnlinvault.com, mail 1859 Powell Street, number 109, San Francisco, California, 94133. Thanks for watching. And here's some more contact information if you need it. Facebook, you can reach me at www.facebook.com forward slash tutoring, all one word. Instagram, you can see me on Instagram at john.linnebal.tutoring. 
And my phone number on my landline is 415-986-7355. My email is john at johnlinnebalt.com. And my website is www.johnlinnebalt.com. All right, hope you are having a good day.